adjacent chord progressions. What are they and what can they do for your rhythm playing? Stay tuned next to find out. <laughs> So what you heard me playing in the beginning intro sequence was something that I call adjacent chord progressions. It is not a label that you'll find outside of me, unless this video really goes viral. But at the time of me making this if video, if you were to do a Google, if you find anything on that term, it's my own. But the concept is probably being done by some other players. They just don't have the framework. They're not thinking of it or communicating it in the way that I'm going to explain it today. This is going to empower them, your, your rhythm playing maybe to make give you another option in your toolbox to make your chord playing sometimes more interesting. So what I was doing, well let's talk about, let's break the, the label down, let's do that. Adjacent of course means right next door to each other. So I was playing a C chord and it, a C chord and a D chord which is the 4 and the 5 major in the key of G major. And I was going back and forth between four and five, four and five, four and five. That's half of the adjacent chord progressions. The other half is that I was trying to get motion up that up the fretboard. I could have tried something descending. Um, you, and you know you can change direction with these two, so it's not like you're stuck. But I was doing ascension, and I have to think in terms of the cage system. So if I go to um, what I was playing earlier, this is an A-shaped C chord. It's part of I'm only playing the second, third, and fourth strings. Move to the five, and I use cage to get to another four, which is E shape four, E shape five. Then I opened up to four string combinations from the fourth string down to the first. Played a G shape C chord, G shape D. Then I played a D shape C chord. It's the cage system that tells me what shape. And then D shaped five chord, and then I landed it on the one chord. That's the concept of, the key of adjacent chord progressions. That you're not limited to the four and five as options. One and two can work really well. Maybe you have a song that just, they want you to vamp. Well, maybe one option to make it more interesting would be to go back and forth between the one major and a two minor, which would be G major and A minor. I can do the triad, which is what you're hearing there. I could try A minor seven. And I opened up the uh, C on the, on the second string. I kept my G on top. You might say, well, that's really a C over G. Yep, you're right. More than one, one way to think about this stuff. You might say that's, uh, some people think or call this, it's a mislabel, but they'll call it a G suspended. It's technically got an E in it, which rules out suspended, but it's very close to the G sus sound. See? It's that E that betrays it, but, but it's got a tense sound to it, right? So what if I was to make my motion go that, up that way? So you just saw me kind of hint at that, okay? I could do G and then I could do, well, I would, uh, I might do that one. Two chord, one keep the one bass down. Okay, uh, I gotta admit, a lot of times when I play these, I because the bass player is holding down one thing, it's intentional because this is like a substitute. It's like an elaboration on. In this case, this example, it's on an elaboration on the one chord. So I don't usually want to mess with the bass notes. So I was holding that bass down, but I'm gonna run out of room quickly if I keep going up. So, so a lot of times I might play this on the second, third, and fourth strings again. That way I'm out of the way of bass notes. One major, two minor, one major, two minor, and one major, two minor, one major. Again, I could go change string combos. Some of these, like that's a D-shaped C chord but C is part of an A minor seven. So I'm still thinking one and two, one and two, one and two. So that's the idea, the concept of adjacent chord progressions. It's in a way to make your parts maybe more interesting at times, 
Sometimes less is more. Sometimes you don't want to do this. This is overkill. But as Ingve says, sometimes more is more. So that's when these might be more appropriate. I think that adds interest and color to some parts. If you like the conceptual approach that I bring on this channel, would you please like and subscribe? I've got more coming. Thank you for watching. Until next time.